Hi guys, I literally just finished filming a Q&A, but I had one particular question that I really wanted to go more in depth for, and I was like, if I try to answer this, it's gonna take forever. So we're making this question into a whole video about product lines, because product lines are something I'm super passionate about, I'm all about, I'm a huge fan of, but I feel like we haven't talked about them that much, just mostly like in passing, like, oh, you should have product lines and not like, this is what a product line is and this is all the things. So on this question, there's a couple of questions. I will read it off first and then we'll go into all the things. So it says, how do you decide what to put into a product line? Where do you draw the line when it comes to number of products within the line that use the same template? Do you prefer product lines with the same topic and multiple activities or one activity type with multiple topics? So those are like the basis questions. I'm gonna make sure I answer those as well as a few other things, but first, what is a product line? So a product line is just a group of products that match each other in the simplest sense. It's basically gonna be either one activity that has different concepts or one concept with different activities. Which one you choose is going to depend on what you're creating and all of that. The reason the product lines are amazing is that one, once you make one thing in a product line, it is so much easier to make the others because you now have like a template and you just go like copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, and you have a whole new product. Number two, once people use one product, they're going to, and hopefully they like it, you know, then they're more likely to buy the rest of the products in the product line, which means that you are then selling more products. You can also bundle these products, which means you're selling more at one time. So you're making more money. And a really good strategy is to have one for free. That way they download the free one. They're like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. And they come back for the rest of them. Um, so these are reasons that like product lines are great. They are easier on you. They save you time. They also help you sell more. They also make your store just more consistent. So people kind of know what they're after. And one thing I have found that's helpful is that I can promote a lot of products products at one time. So on Instagram, I can be like, Hey, here's this really fun game that I love to play. It's available in all of these concepts. And so that way people see it and they're like, Oh, maybe I'm not working on rhythm, but they're working on melody and they can get the melody ones instead of the rhythm ones and vice versa. Or they go looking for one and they find 20 and they're like, great, I'm going to buy them all. So product lines are so, so, so helpful, both for you making products and also for your buyers purchasing products. That being said, let's get into a couple of these questions. So when, how do you decide what to put in a product line? Um, I have two different like ways that I do product lines in the version I told you. So in some product lines, it's like, here's one activity and I'm going to make it for different concepts. I teach elementary music. So for me, it's like, rhythm level one, rhythm level two, rhythm level three, or like melody wise, I'll have melody with two notes, melody with three notes, melody with four notes, and it builds up from there. So that's what I do personally for you. That might be like, here's a game for fractions. Here's a game for decimals. Here's a game for place value, but it's the same game and just different concepts. So there's that. Um, then on the flip side, I have Usually I consider them like lesson packs, which are one concept, multiple activities. So how I decide what I'm going to do is when it's this one, the same activity, but different concepts, I have like a set amount of concepts that I cover. So if I'm doing a rhythm activity, here are all the different rhythms that I cover. If I'm doing a melody activity, here's all the different melodies that I cover. And then I have a couple other things like instruments, of the orchestra and stuff like that. And if they will work with whatever activity it is, then that's great. And if they don't work with them, that's fine. So sometimes it's going to be just a rhythm activity. Sometimes it can be just a melody activity, depending on what it is. Sometimes I can make it for both. And so it's just going to depend on how well it works for those. And then again, with that, I have like certain levels that I know I'm going to hit. And so like right now I'm doing five melody levels and I would like to add more, but five is like the most that I can handle right now. So I'm just making sure all of them have those consistent five. And then in the future, I might make a couple of more. And then for rhythm, I have even more than five. I have like eight, 10, I don't know, a lot. And so I try to make them for all of those if possible. Um, so that's kind of how I decide product line, what's going in those. If it's a melody activity, I know it's gonna be these five. If it's a rhythm, it's gonna be however many. If it can work for both, then I will do it for both. 
Um, on the flip side, the lesson packs are also going to totally depend on what it is. So I have like song based lesson packs and those are always going to include a Google slide where you learn the song. It'll have printable activities and then sometimes, and usually it'll have a third. I don't usually do a pack unless it has a third thing. So like a game that has the same theme as it or something that's just kind of related that I can add in there. I was doing interactive Google Slides, but since COVID has gone down and online teaching has gone down, those sales have gone down as well. So I haven't been doing quite as many of those for me because I teach elementary music. For you, those might be just still doing great, that's fine. Um, but just personally, that's what I have been working on. Um, other things are, you know, just, I hate to say it, but it just depends. So it's just going to be, you know, what do I want to create that I think is gonna go well and what also do I have time for, which has been the biggest thing the last couple of months. I'm like, here's like 20 things that I can make that would all go together. And then I'm like, I don't have time to make 20 let's do three and so it's like how much can i create you know in a certain amount of time has been the biggest hindrance for me on that side um but yeah that's the biggest thing it's just you know honestly and for a lot of those you know like i have a jazz bundle and i add things to the jazz bundle when i think of fun jazz activities and i don't stress about it a ton versus these are more like set where i know it's gonna be the exact same thing i'm just gonna switch out the concept so instead of quarter and eight notes it's gonna have quarter notes eight notes and rests in it and so like those are gonna be the big differences where do you draw the line when it comes to number of products within the line that use the same template? So same thing, um, just once you've exhausted all of the concepts you want to cover. So I would say having a set amount of concepts is really helpful. So I know like these are the things we're going to cover. Once you get to the end, then that's the end. Um, no one's going to be like, how dare you have all of these products that all have the same template because nobody cares. Um, they're either going to be like, oh man, I really loved that product. So now I'm going to buy more or they're going to be like, oh, I don't need more because I have the one and we're just gonna use it the one time. So I don't have like big strict rules when it comes to those. Do you prefer product lines with the same topic and multiple activity types or one activity type and multiple topics? Again, it's gonna depend on what we're doing, but probably the one on, that I keep using on this side where it's here's the one thing we're doing and here's a whole bunch of different ways to do it. Um, the reason I like that is because I think of those more as product lines versus like jazz activities. A lot of them are not as related because they're just kind of like things that go together. Um, and so I really like having those products. And so like, here's five games for Soulfish. Here's, you know, 10 games for Rhythm. And they're also really quick. Once you make one, it is so fast to make another one because you just, again, delete all the quarter and eighth notes and add in quarter eighth and rest patterns instead i just observed this i just made a whole new product line that's like a springtime right the room activity and so i made it in both melody and in solfege and i finished them all so quickly because i literally just took out the concepts added in the new concepts and had a whole new product and so like i got a ton of products done very quickly because of the product line and because of having the template and all of that stuff so i probably would say i prefer those and i do a lot more of those um product lines with the same activity just like different or different activities same concept are either like they just happen to go together but i didn't make them go together or sometimes I have put a little more thought into them, but they're usually not as big. So like I did a winter games thing, not Olympics, winter games, cause you know, trademarks. Um, so in those, it was different activities that were all based on winter games. So ice skating, hockey, like that kind of stuff. Um, and so I had a virtual field trip. I had a rhythm manipulative activity. And then I had, um like a listening activity that went along with some of the music from the olympics without including the recordings because again copyright so those three went together really well i really liked that product line it sold very well i enjoyed making them it was all still related even though it wasn't the same activity and i really liked that one but i feel like those ideas come less frequently and so there's that um and then again also like it's just 
yeah, it just is what it is. So I probably prefer the other one, but both of them are super helpful and both of them add to bundles. I will also give a little mention to, I've had people ask like how many products should you bundle? You should put products or no, how many bundles should you put a product in? You should put products in as many bundles as makes sense. So if I have winter games activities and I also have virtual field trip bundle and I have a virtual field trip based on winter games, it's going to go in both because it makes sense in both. And so it's not going to be anything that's weird. Just do however many makes sense. Um, and don't overthink it, but do use product lines. They have definitely changed my store and my life because again, it makes product creation so much faster and it also helps you sell so much more. So if you haven't tried it yet, I highly recommend it's a great thing and yeah, do it. It's gonna be great. And you will thank me later. All right. Tali and I, Say bye. Say bye, girls. Not so much you gotta get it from her.